Ladies, if we do this right, if we stick to our guns, young women in the future are going to look back on the great boy boycott of 2022 and say that was when things changed. That was how the women that came before us gained our independence. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. I am your girl, Debbie and the Key, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot. Room 303. If you are new, welcome to our crew, but my returnees. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome back Wi-Fi's. It would appear that someone has woke the sleeping giant. Someone has poked the bear and we are watching the clash of the titans well somewhat i wouldn't necessarily call the manosphere titanic but finally in comes the calvary black women we have been praying for rest and it appears that in some strange infinity war in-game turn of events much like Dr. Strange coming in with his mandalas. Here is our help. <laughs> Ladies, it is time for us to retire from the fight and give it over to those who are more capable than us of putting the manosphere back into its place. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. Hello, Wi-Fi's, and welcome back to yet another episode of The Wireless Woman. I know it has been a long time, a very long time. It's been a long time. Two months, over two months to be exact, but I'm back and as always, I'm better. Today's episode is going to be all about my boy boycott for the rest of 2022. But before we get into today's content, go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Why do you ask? Because when you like it, well, I Love it. And if you haven't already, for whatever insane reason, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. No, but in all real actuality, I have been <laughs> battling in real time very extreme bouts of depression and anxiety. The one thing I'm going to always be on this channel with y'all is transparent and um it's been quite crippling to be quite honest and I have found that the enemy to elevation a lot of times is isolation while we do need to take periods of time to ourselves just to stabilize regulate our own emotions too much time alone it really can turn you into your own arch nemesis. I think social media has given us the ability to be alone together and we're watching the collective psychosis of people as a result of the pervasive 
loneliness that people actually feel and being able in their loneliness to reach out and create communities of other people who aren't really actually doing that one-on-one real-world relational work. They can just get into these chat rooms and these spaces and spread toxicity and spread the rhetoric that comes from loneliness, isolation, and depression. You know, we should try as I am trying to do with my wireless channel to create safe spaces to pull each other out of holes, not dig them and throw each other in. Still, bus boycotts set a new precedent for nonviolent civil disobedience dedicated to upending Jim Crow. They developed their own private taxi plan. Blacks who owned cars would pick up others who needed rides at designated points around the city. All right, I am back after a couple of different takes of this video and several days later to say that many people thought that that weak, muted, pacifist, submissive march on Washington was what really brought about change, but it was not a demonstration of power. It was a demonstration of numbers. It was a demonstration of solidarity, albeit, but what really brought the white power structure to its knees was the Montgomery bus boycotts. You can never whip these boys if you don't keep you and them separate. The boycott struck at the economic basis in Montgomery, Alabama, I think a lot of people have thoroughly forgotten our history and don't really understand the difference between a protest and a boycott. The North End, normally jammed with black shoppers, is deserted. We just saw the empty buses go by because there were no black people on them. I mean, that March on Washington, those protests at lunch counters did in the 1950s and 60s what they've done in 2022, which is absolutely nothing. Give other groups of people like the police, like white supremacists, the ability to show their power because ultimately what we're protesting for is a piece of white pie. We have to understand that boycotting is about separating ourselves from the power structure and establishing our own economic basis. Without black riders or black dollars, the city suffered financially. Those people were willing to walk. They were willing to share their cars and vehicles. They created their own taxi service. And really, they were inches <laughs> away from having their own bus lines when they finally came in and granted them equal rights on the bus when the bus riders were 75% black in the first place. And the truth of the matter is, we as black people control one third of the economy. We put a trillion dollars into the economy. So it's not a matter of black resources. It's a matter of black power. Now, I know this is a very roundabout way <laughs> to get to the point that I'm actually trying to make, which is that black women, you've been gaslit, you've been hoodwinked, you've been bamboozled. I say it, I say it again, you've been had, you've been took, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, let us stray, run amok. We are in this place where we are fighting and fighting to have this uniformity and solidarity with our men. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's all of them. And for the people that will say it's not all black men, it's just some, tell me which ones they are so that we can separate them adequately. But I can tell you unequivocally, <laughs> it's not enough. It's not enough to warrant its own separate category. I mean, who's the different ones? Your daddy? 
your baby daddy and before y'all get mad at me i'm gonna go ahead and let you know i don't care get mad at your mama release the kraken i'm saying that we're working at a deficit we're working with three-fourths of what it would take to actually have equality when it comes to our men. And unfortunately, while we're going back and forth about desirability politics, we're losing economically, we're losing educationally, and I'm just not really sure as women if we are honestly pooling the strength and power that we have because we're so busy trying to compete with the patriarchy and the male power structure, even within our own race, that the work we could actually be doing to make a difference for ourselves and for our children never comes to the forefront of the discussion. We as black women are making 67, 63 to 67 cents on a white male's dollar. We're making less money than any other ethnic group because you can't really call it a racial group. I mean, let's be honest. Asians, Indians, they've been inducted into the white supremacist power structure. So black people, black women in particular, we are really on our own. And I don't say that from this bitter place. I say it from an underdog place because we're actually wielding tons of political, social, and economic power. They wouldn't fear us, be talking about us, or competing with us if we didn't actually have power. Today is Black Women's Equal Pay Day. And black women typically make just 67 cents for every dollar paid to a white man. We can't go into these partnerships with men with one hand tied behind our backs. In all the time that we as black women have been supporting our community, our men have never gone to task for us to say, black women are the only women that have worked historically speaking, alongside their men. They have done equal work. They deserve equal pay. We've never really seen our men go to task, go to the Supreme Court and champion our reproductive rights. These are the things that protect us. These are the things that build generational wealth to say we want our black women to make the same money that we as men make so that we are not in the racial wealth gap crippled by the fact that you're paying black women less than white women. Ain't that right? Amen. Everything that we've seen in the past that was done to wipe out black power, to wipe out the Black Panthers, the Co-Intel Pro, all of these agencies that were dedicated to stamping out black unity, stomping out black finances. We saw black Wall Street be burned down, affluent black communities like Rosewood be dismantled because of fear. There is this belief that if black women are given this equity with men that we so desire that it won't actually be equal. Just like with whites who know that if they give black people the same economic footing that they have, not that they've got to give us reparations or give us money, they just got to keep, they just got to let us take that one hand that's been tied behind our back out and make it a fair fight. They know that it won't at that point be a fair fight. And I'm finding that this is the same extraction that men are trying to take. Okay, well, if you want to be independent, we're not going to build for you. Okay, well, if you want to be independent, we're not going to pay. If you want to be independent, we're not going to protect. Doesn't that sound a little familiar? Look, if you hate cops just because they're cops, the next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. Ultimately, sometimes the greatest fight is no fight. The greatest fight is to disengage. 
I was likewise in a conversation with a colleague. And one thing that I, woo, I really, really appreciate about myself. One thing that I really value about me is my ability to communicate. (laughs) Now it might bother some other people, (laughs) but I love my communication style. I really do. I had asserted that I had a certain expectation. And then I set a boundary for what type of treatment I felt I deserved the merit that I deserved based on the contribution that I had made. Now, this conversation didn't go exactly how I'm presenting it to you, but in the end, I was brought into a room by a superior and told that he felt my approach was aggressive. Now, I'm assertive, but one thing I'm not is aggressive because aggressive requires a lot of fear. I'm never interacting or conversing with a person from a place of fear. I don't have natural enemies like that, so I don't necessarily fear other people. I'm not grappling for power or position, so there's really never anything for me in most settings to fear. So as soon as that person said, I felt your approach was aggressive, all right, which was a total gaslight (laughs) because the other person was yelling, face red, massaging their temples, everything. I didn't lose control. And I think that made the other person feel like I felt more powerful in the situation because most men equate power with control. But my efforts to control myself are to be understood, not to, you know, uh, educationally spar with other people. I recognize that I'm intelligent. I recognize that I'm articulate. But you have a lot of articulate sociopaths, okay? Okay? <laughs> not everybody that's putting the language together well has the intention to educate or inform or persuade. Some people have the intention to manipulate. And you have to know the difference. So when my superior said that to me, he said, I felt your approach was aggressive. I told him, I said, at the point that you called me aggressive. And he goes, I didn't say you were aggressive. I said that I felt like your approach was aggressive. I said, at the point that you called me aggressive, I have to disengage from this conversation. I said, I no longer feel safe to share what I feel is my concern. I no longer feel safe to express my side of the issue for fear that it's going to be misunderstood and misconstrued. I said, at this point, we're going to need a mediator. I said, I don't want to be alone with you in this space and not have an interpreter, not just for my protection, but for yours as well. There are people that feel when you have power, just the power to not be under their control, that you are automatically a threat. And this boy, boycott, it's happening naturally. This is natural selection coming forward and starting to show what men are not capable of being partners. And we can fight against it. We can get out in public and try to promote our men, but they've taken the behavior that used to be rampant in our community and put it into other communities. And everybody knows now the secret is out. The jig is up. It's time for us to take our power back and to bring our energy into our locus of control. We're we're expending all this energy outside of things that we can actually control. And there are people who seek to control us, but if we can become self-control, if we can have self-confidence, self-esteem, self-efficacy, I'm consistently praised on my self-efficacy. I advocate for myself. These are the things I need to be successful. This is the environment that I find to be unproductive. That doesn't mean people are going to do anything about it. (laughs) Doesn't mean they care. But they can never say they weren't told and they weren't informed. Because the purpose of the communication 
is to inform, not conform someone else. But I'm finding that we're watching really our prayers be answered. We're watching a lot of men get into upper echelon of ages and not be mated. They're saying that we're unmated and we're unmated because they're unmated. It's the great gaslight. It's a projection. It's a person putting on to you all the sad loneliness and disappointment, the frustration that they feel in their own lives. And we are in this interdependent, codependent, trying to prove our value and worth to each other. And black women, it is time to use the word I used in conflict with my male peer and disengage. <laughs> for those that have been on my channel for a while, you know what that word means, unplug. It's time to be unbothered so that we can truly conserve and redirect that energy into being unleashed, into really moving to the forefront of being the leaders and the change agents in our communities. We have been in those communities. We have been left there. We are the last women who are actually putting up a standard against not just our own black men, but all men. <laughs> all you swirling ladies, let's be real, real honest. If you've been out there in these white waters dating, they're not really treating us much different than black men. The amount of respect that we're demanding from them, we're not always getting from them. I mean, you got to remember, this is the patriarchy here. <laughs> this is the white male power structure. And you're going to hear me talk about that in my blonde review for my Marilyn Monroe video. Listen, I watched all three hours of that movie and I did it for you. You're going to find out on that episode why. But... We as black women are raising up a standard. I'm hearing our men say that we can't be touched in a way. You know, of course, it's not said that way. It's like, oh, y'all think y'all better than us. You don't need us. But they're saying the bar has raised and we are doing everything we can to take that bar off the pole vaulting deck and put it in hell. Like, we're not making these men high jump for that thing. We're not making them get that pole vault out for the bar. We just taking the bar and putting it in hell. <laughs> we, we got the bar down so low they could step over it and step on us in the process. But dating outside your race, these, these white men, all they be wanting on the first day to sex too. I mean, and some of them, like, I don't know who's going to be honest and be real with me. They are even more up front about just wanting sex and not being willing to progress in any type of relationship with you unless it unless you are showing them that you are way more sexually uninhibited than a white woman like a lot of them are trying to get a kink off so this isn't really about what race of men we choose or even what social class that we choose because these men don't see black women as a prize period I've dated Indian men. I think that's the worst. I mean, they literally are like, you want baby to have sex? You want? Like, we have been sexualized so much that it's really shameful how unashamed, unabashedly men approach us. This is what the boycott is about. It's about restoring a certain amount of dignity to who we are as women and who we are as people. It's about us taking up the mantle of being responsible for our image instead of being in this place of feeling that we've got to live down to everyone else's expectations of us. And this is your daily reminder that Magneto was right. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it. By any means necessary.
but it's you, black woman. It's always been you holding this whole thing together and you're distracted now. It's time for us to disengage. It's time for us to be about our business. I mean, we're doing it anyway. I'm not asking you to do anything different. I'm just asking you to be intentional about the position we've already been in and the work that we must do. <laughs> we are literally the most uncoupled group of people. I keep hearing people say that. I see this as a great reset. <laughs> I know I sound like a white supremacist right now, but this is an opportunity. It's showing us the places where we're failing because we're richer than ever before as a people. We are literally living in the dreams that they were marching and protesting and boycotting for. And it has become a nightmare because we lost the one thing that was more important to them back then than the assets and the resources and capitalism. We lost unity community, solidarity. And we needed to see this happen. But women, we are going to have to hold that line. We are going to have to be the ones that say in our generation, it stops. You know, I have a grandmother who's still alive and I have a mother and all they ever wanted for me was for me not to be stuck at the behest of a man like they were. And I'm literally their dream. We say that as black people being free, that we are the dream of the ancestors. Black women, we are the dream of the black women that came before us. And we have this opportunity to be able to say that the great boy boycott of 2022 was a success that we leveled the patriarchal, misogynistic power struggle and won our freedom, our dignity, and our autonomy to just be the women that God made us. I have a few more videos that are going to be coming out behind this that talk about submission, that talk about black patriarchy, because they love to tell us as black women that we've fallen in line with white feminism, that the white woman's feminism wasn't our fight. All the while gaslighting us as if there is no misogynistic patriarchy in the black community. As if black men do not have male privilege <laughs> just because they are in subjection and submission to another <laughs> male group doesn't mean that they don't still exercise male privilege. I'm going to go more into that in my episodes. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this whole they're calling it a gender war, but I'm going to call it a boy boycott. They sad and lonely, but we don't have to be. It just is what it is. But you can feel free to tell me how you really feel in these comments and let me know what you would like to see in the coming weeks. And just trust and know <laughs> that I had to redo this video because it was it was it was coming off different. But I really want to make sure I stay in a place where I'm bringing light and not just increasing the darkness on social media. So if you feel like I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel. And yes, I'm on my V for Vendetta kick. Then go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, drop me some comments, and until the next episode, class is now dismissed. All right, thank you for sticking around until the very end of this episode. If you liked this content, then you may want to check out this video right here. And if you haven't already, for whatever insane reason, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link right here. Until the next time, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. We don't negotiate with terrorists.